Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you how you can set up a Google Analytics web property. It's a pretty easy process, but I find that it's important to be able to show people how the web properties are set up. And it's generally a very straightforward and simple process. There are a couple of decisions you need to make, and there's some interesting things happening with Google Analytics right now, um, particularly the split of two different types of web properties. One is called Universal Analytics, another is called Google Analytics 4. There is some stuff you need to be aware of when setting up your account, and I wanna cover some of the basics about the difference between these two types of web properties. But in order to set up a web property, you will need a Google Analytics account. So you can go to Google Analytics, you can register for it, and you're also gonna need a website where you can essentially link the website to your Google Analytics account. And in this case, I'm gonna use something called Weebly, Weebly is a website builder, just like Squarespace or Wix or WordPress. Weebly has a free option. We're just gonna use that for demonstration. So what I've done is I've gone to Weebly using a free account. I've set up this kind of really quick fake website, and I'm gonna use this to demonstrate how you'll actually implement the code for Google Analytics. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start in Google Analytics. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on admin. And the first thing you need to understand is that there are three main components you need to wrap your head around here, accounts, properties, and views. And the thing with an account is that one account can house many different web properties. And so uh, that's the first thing you're gonna set up is if you don't have one, you'll go and set up a new account. If you already have an account, you can create a new web property that sits underneath that. So an account is really just a, a way to organize or manage all of your different web properties. Next, you have web properties uh, or just properties in general. Properties are linked to specific apps or websites, and generally you'll have one property for each app or website. Sometimes you can have multiple properties, but this is one of the most important things in this process, which is setting up a new property, and it creates this unique identifier. So in this case, if you're using the universal analytics tag, it creates this alphanumeric code, the UA545, et cetera. This is a very important number in a web property because it links your Google Analytics account with your website and we're gonna show you how you set that up in a minute. So properties, again, are generally linked to individual websites or apps, but there are cases where you can actually set up multiple properties on a single website if you needed to. The last thing is you can create different views, and views can function in different ways. Think of these as like a lens that you can put on top of your web property. So for example, if you wanna have one view that filters out all the people who visited from a certain country. Um, so you can have different views that are country specific. Keep in mind, you can do that inside of Google Analytics as well. So if you had a website that uh, has traffic from all over the world, what you could do is go into your Google Analytics report and filter out people from different countries. Now, if you do that at the view level, it basically means that data is no longer available in that view. If you know that you'll have certain ways of looking at data where you wanna have a special kind of filter or lens on uh, one particular web property, you can create a different view. But if you do create a secondary view, the general consensus is that you should always create and maintain one kind of standard vanilla view that with no changes to it. So you don't, you have at least one view with no filters or anything. Because once you create additional views with different settings, like different filters, it's kind of, that's it. There's no going backwards. You can't retrieve the data that was filtered out. And so you need to be careful with this. A lot of the times people don't even touch the views. The views can be very useful for certain use cases, but you'll actually find that you can just not touch this and it'll be all okay. So what I wanna do is I want to go and create a new web property for my website. And again, I've got my website on Weebly. It's already published. I published it already. And so this is, again, this is just a fake website. So I'm gonna to go to Google Analytics Admin this is uh, on the wrong account. So I'm gonna switch this to the proper account and it's defaulting to an existing web property. I'm going to create a new web property. So create web property. Now, this is the first thing that you need to watch out for. Google Analytics currently is at an interesting time in its product roadmap because there are two different ways that you can set up Google Analytics. One is using something called Google Analytics 4, which is their new web property that is actually the default for all new websites that are being created. And generally, Google Analytics prop, uh, 4 properties are created to be able to be used for both websites and apps. They've actually changed the way that things are quantified. Instead of hits, they focus more on events, and things are being calculated in a different way. And generally, the changes to GA4 properties 
are all very positive in terms of the way that they calculate things. You can also do like no code events tracking, which is very, very good. You can create new kinds of events without doing any code. There's a lot to like about it. That being said, the traditional setup, which is called universal analytics, has a different way of quantifying the data, but also reporting it. And there are a lot of really valuable reports in the universal tag uh, reporting suite that I find are not in the GA4 property. And I find that to be a big shortcoming. So although the GA, GA4 properties are actually very, very good, they're very flexible, very scalable. My problem with Google Analytics 4 currently, and this, could, this will change over time, is that they have not carried forward all of the really cool reports that are in universal analytics properties that I think are really essential to doing things like page performance analysis and stuff like that. My suggestion is if you are setting up a web property that you set up both a Google Analytics 4 and a universal analytics property. And the way that you can do that is to click on this button here. Because again, if you don't change anything, the default will be GA4 and that's it. There will be no additional uh, web property created for universal analytics. So I'm going to click on show advanced options. And it's saying, hey, you, uh, it's giving you some information to say, hey, universal analytics is no longer the default, but you can create one if you want by clicking this little button here. And it's also going to say, hey, do you want to create both? And yes, you do want to create both a GA4 and a universal analytics property. So what it's going to ask you to do is to put in your website URL. Now it's going to say, sorry, that's not a valid URL. It's because they take care of the uh, HTTPS. So I need to just remove that. So let's get rid of that. We've added in the URL. One thing I forgot here is that I do have to add in a property name. So I'm just going to call this my personal blog. So this is just a name, any name you can, uh, you want to give it. You can also set the country time zone and currency. This is actually fairly important because the time zone that you input here will determine how the data is timestamped. And if you're looking at a report where you want to look at like um, time series data over the course of a day, if you're based in say Australia and you set this to, you know, like Pacific standard time in the U S then you're not going to get an accurate read of your time series data. So what you want to do is actually set this to the correct region and time zone. So I'm not actually based in Australia, but I'm just going to put that. It'll default to time zone. You can still adjust it. I'm going to change the currency. This is more important if you are doing, if you're selling stuff on your site, this will change the default currencies in your conversion reports. So everything is good. I've given it a name, set my country, time zone, currency, and I've added in my URL. And I am going to create both a GA4 and universal analytics property. I'm going to click next. There's some information they want to know here. This will not change the implementation of your web property, but it is important information because Google Analytics does share some of this information anonymously with other web properties. And for example, there's a really great report called benchmarking in a universal analytics setup that allows you to see how your website compares to others based on the size of your business and the category. So this information helps tag your web property and it also shares some of that information with others. So let's say this is a blog about travel. I'm just going to choose travel as the category. I'm going to say this is a small business and you can just, this is again, just information for Google. I'm just going to say whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to click create. Okay. So once you click create, this page is going to come up and this might seem like a lot of information, but all we really need to do is focus on the tagging instructions. Cause what we need to do now is get some information that we're going to add into our new Weebly website to link our Google analytics account with our new website. Now, the thing is you will have to do this twice, one for the Google analytics for implementation and one for the universal analytics implementation. I'm going to do this. What you're looking at here is actually for the Google Analytics 4 implementation. So we're going to do that first. So what I need to do is I'm going to click on this global site tag, click this, and it is going to give you a piece of JavaScript, which has a bunch of information that your website will need to connect your Google Analytics account with your new website. So I'm going to copy this, click copy. And then now I'm going to switch over to Weebly. And usually what you do is you drop this code into the HTML of every page of your site. Usually it can be in either the header or the footer. So what happens is when your page loads and this little piece of information is loaded, it basically fires off the tag and sends the information back to 
your Google Analytics account. There's different ways that you add this depending on the site you're using. Some websites like Squarespace kind of make it easier for you. And they have like a setting where it'll just ask you for like your UA ID for universal analytics setup or your measurement ID. So some of them just allow you to punch in this piece of information. Um, but the default is always that you will fully, you will add this full piece of code to the header or footer of your website. So on Weebly, and again, this will be different depending on whether you're using WordPress or Squarespace or whatever. But if I click on settings, and then in Weebly, I go to SEO. Here, you can see that they have footer code or header code, and they're actually suggesting that you put it in the footer code. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Control V or Command V, and I've pasted in that code. And this is really all I need to do. But remember, I said that I wanted to include both the Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics tags on this deployment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this page. I'm gonna go back to this setup. I'm gonna click X here click back again. And you can see that I'm now looking at the GA4 property for my new website. I'm going to switch this to my personal blog here. So now you can see I've switched this to my personal blog. And this is now the universal analytics tag. So you can see the difference. You'll see one says GA4, one says UA. And so this is the setup for the, for the universal analytics tag. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to tracking info, tracking code, and this is going to give you a layout that looks slightly different, but it's going to give you something that looks basically the same, which is a uh, JavaScript snippet, which I'm going to paste into the footer of my new website. I'm going to select this, Control or Command C. I'm going to go over to my Weebly website. I'm going to add this one directly after. So I'm going to Control or Command Paste. So I've got both tags for my uh, website, both my Google Analytics 4, uh, tag and my universal analytics tag here. So this is done. This is all I need to do. And I'm now going to publish these changes to my website because with Weebly, you can save the edits, but it won't actually go live. I'm going to publish this. And there we go. We've just published that. So what I've done here is I've kind of split up my screen so you can see in particular the universal analytics real time report. And I just opened up my new fake website and it's picked me up as a visitor on a desktop, which I am. You can also see that if I go to a different page, a little page I just created really quickly, watch, you'll see here that it will update in a second here. So you can see it's just updated there. So it knows that there is one person on the website and they've gone to this about page. So this is the universal analytics setup, just to show you what this looks like if I jump over to the GA4 setup, it looks very, very different. As I mentioned, it's just a very, it's very different in terms of both how information is being quantified and how it visually kind of gives you the data back. And we'll cover that in another lecture. But you can also see that the real time report in um, GA4 is also showing me that, that one hit or that one event on my site. So this is just to give you a sense of how Google Analytics works and how you actually go about setting it up. The most important thing here is getting that snippet of code, which you drop into the header or footer of your website. What's I think most important here is at this particular point in time, there are two web properties that are really common, which is both the universal analytics tag and the Google Analytics 4 tag. And all web properties right now are defaulting to GA4. I highly recommend that you do both, that you create both a GA4 and universal analytics tag. Uh, even if you're not gonna use both of them, the reason I suggest that is because although the technical aspects of GA4 tags is far superior over the traditional universal analytics tags, from just a, a reading data and reporting perspective, I still think that universal analytics setups give you more in-depth reporting. So I highly recommend that you do set up both of those tags. So that's it for this video. I hope this was useful and thanks for watching. Thank you.